Keir Starmer, Simon? Well, yes, there's, there's Keir Starmer demands early general election and warns Tory government will fall. Uh, the thing about um, Keir Starmer is that, I mean, we have to give him credit. You know, he's, I mean, since he took over, well, he's put on about 30 points at the polls from where Labour well, was. So he's put on about 30 pretty, pounds. You know, no, pretty, 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 low, pretty low bar, you know, the Corbynite bar. But yeah. nonetheless, you know, he's got it back to where he, 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 it needs to be, at least. And he's, you know, arguably got a couple of years still in election. I just am a bit desperate to him to say, not we aren't the Tories and we hate the Tories. That's fine, OK, we aren't the, you know, he says Labour's not the Tories and they hate the Tories. That's all fine, if they want to say that. But I just kind of quite want to know now, let's hear what you're for. You know, I just think that the time now is to stop wallowing around in all the unpopularness of Boris Johnson. Now we've got to do is get out with a bit of vision because they're going to be new. Some new candidates going to come in, you know, and there'll be a new prime minister and they'll have the chance of saying, oh, I'm not Boris. So there's no point Keir Starmer saying I'm not Boris. I think, you know, but the one thing he did say was he said he told the Tories to put their money where their mouth is. And it struck me with Boris Johnson just looking at that um, renovation of the flat strikes me that what Boris Johnson has puts our money where his mouth is. Yes, he does. Definitely done that you know, more seven than £7,000 pound rug and a four and a half, a three and a half thousand pound drinks trolley. Well, that's right. I mean, I yeah. don't know how you can spend that much on a trolley, I've got to say. I'd be more interested in the contents of the trolley. The, the trolley. I'd spend that on a big bottle of wine. Definitely. So, I, mean, I could do that in a trip to Wadbins. But, uh, Nick, uh, the issue is that uh, Beergate is no longer a scandal that hangs over the leader of the opposition... Uh, he's essentially seen his foe, Boris Johnson, go. Beer Gate's no longer a problem. All bets are off. Our next prime minister, surely. Absolutely. I mean, he's, he's done well there, Stammer. I mean, the police have dealt with him very favourably compared to Boris, and especially compared to Rishi, and no-one's really sure still what Rishi did, really. But, but they've let him off. Perhaps he saw that coming because, of course, he made that big statement, I'll resign if I get a fine, obviously thinking he wouldn't get a fine. And it has proved a shrewd political move. And he's suddenly doing OK just by being ultra boring and having no opinions. Although, as Simon points out, that's also his flaw. But he's just currently doing all right just by watching the Tories implode and having no particular opinions. I don't believe... And I think he's been talking to Blair, like I said the other day. He's got his five-point plan. I, he's given up on the referendum and so on. But... I don't really believe when he says that there'll be no pact with the SNP. Maybe. And he seems to be more open to a pact with the Liberal Democrats, it says here. And also, I noticed that the, the poll results are favourable for Labour, but it seems to be more about the collapse of the Tories, just like the by-election results. Mm. So does anyone actually still like Keir Starmer, or is it just that they're waiting to see what happens with this mess of the Tory party? Well, the counter-argument to the argument I was putting, and in a sense you're putting too, is that actually you don't want to come up with policies yet, because what will happen is that they'll just be dismembered and taken apart. What, but I'm, I don't think I want policies. I kind of want to know on the big issues, on the balance... I want to know, kind of, you know, what is Labour's approach to technology and health going to be? What is Labour's approach going to be to inflation and, you know, the cost of living crisis? I just wouldn't mind understanding a bit about that, and I don't feel I do, really. Because we and knew... I'm reasonably well, you know, connected. We, we knew what Jeremy Corbyn believed in. We knew what Jeremy Corbyn, do. yes. And, and yeah. we know that would have sunk everything down below the waterline. And we, but the thing is, it's a bit like Boris. I mean, maybe politics is like that, but we don't... I mean, Boris Johnson doesn't stand for anything, does he? But, no, Starmer's yeah. also very sus on the woke stuff. You pointed out the other night on this show that Blair was saying, move away from wokeness. And Starmer, of course, he kneeled for Black Lives Matter. He couldn't say what a woman was. Do you think he's really perceived as, as a bit too woke for the average sort of, let's say, red wall, blue wall voter? I think in the end, what you have to do in those situations is it's not about being woke or not woke and it's not about being anti-trans or pro-trans or black lives. It's not about taking sides. It's about having a negotiated way through where people can have proper conversations in the country in order to resolve quite difficult issues. So if you're going to lead, what you need to do is you need to say, look, trans women, are women, trans women and women are women. Now how are we going to sort that out? We've got an issue with racism in the country. Is it institutional? Is it occasional? I don't know. We need to sort it out. We need to tackle that in the Met or wherever it is. It's just you want a sense of strength of purpose. That's I, what I, I want. I completely agree. And I'm not sure that, you know, those who are lamenting Boris Johnson's demise will give their vote to Keir Starmer. I'm not sure that Boris going makes Starmer necessarily any more popular. Well, you've always got a problem or when you've got compelling. a new candidate, haven't you? I and mean, when well, you've got somebody right. new, they will say, as I said, I'm not You're Boris. Right. Especially, I think, if it's a woman, I think that Keir Starmer might struggle uh, to attack... Uh, a, a female prime minister because he's quite old school, he's quite gentlemanly, and he might struggle with that dynamic. Neil Kinnock famously struggled to attack Margaret Thatcher mm. because he was quite an old-fashioned, mm. traditional guy, and he, he actually said after mm. after he stopped being 
the Labour leader that that was a difficulty for him to tear into a woman on the other side of the dispatch box. Um, look, let's see.